Okay, so the sampling feature is cool and all. You can record your voice and manipulate it. But what if you have something that you previously recorded and you want to manipulate that? So I already have this load save file function. So yeah, it might be good practice to not just copy and paste the load saved file function, but I'm just going to copy and paste this load save file function. The reason being is I want it to take in the element. And basically the only difference just being is that I'm just going to make it say load sample down here. Make sure we put our element and pass it to the load sample. Yeah, let me just copy my saved load, paste it here, add an argument for this, change load save file to load save sample file, give it this. The class will be samp load file. And uh, yeah, I have to add another thing for it in the way of change so that it will only appear when you select sample. I now have choose file, no file chosen, and it looks ugly and I hate it. Great. Okay, because one is always display none, and then the real button just clicks the button that's invisible. But I probably covered this in my last video and forgot. Because we can have a sample for every single waveform, I can't just say get element by ID anymore. Whatever, I have to give it an ID, and I have to give it a unique ID, so I have to say like, I don't know, load sample, and then a dash, then add the instrument number, and then another dash, and then the instrument's wave number. And now that button has a unique thing that I can grab, so then I can copy that ID and paste it up here so that the invisible thing can click it. And then I make this one say load wave. Does this work now? Yes, good. Let me just put a breakpoint here. Let me load a wave file. Unexpected end of input. Let me just do backslashes on single quotes and maybe that'll fix it. Now it's happy. Okay, so if I click, let me add in my file. So now we have a good 80 kilobytes of unreadable garbage, but this is fine. I mean, I, I gave it a wave, right? Let me just make sure that this is actually a wave file and not an MP3. It's an MP3. Oh my God, why am I so dumb? I've got some waves around here, I'm sure. Okay, what is Fami excerpt? Is this is this a wave? Mm -hmm. What does our data look like this time? Uh, it's even larger and it's even more nonsense. So when I have my save data, so when I have my save data, what does my SAMP data look like? Basically a big giant array. A whole bunch of numbers between negative one and one is what I have. So now I should probably look up, like, I don't know, wave file specification. I could probably grab some function online that automatically reads this in, but where's the fun in that? Don't you just want to go online and try and understand how the format works? But yeah, it has a whole bunch of information about the formatting at the beginning. I mean, yeah, the data started here. So rather than support all waves, it is probably going to be a lot easier just to assume that everything is in this encoding which is signed 16-bit PCM. I'll just assume that wherever data starts is where we're gonna start. Yeah, and then from then on begins the data. And it might be a whole bunch of garbage, who knows. And now we have to convert a data string into the sample string. Hold on, let me just figure out what the min and max values of these things are. Okay, sometimes it's just a really big number for some reason, what is with that? Oh, it's a question mark character that it doesn't understand. That's why it's giving me garbage. So I've already lost the data at this point. So I feel like, yeah, the problem with Rita's text is that I'm losing some of the characters and some of them are pretty important. They have Rita's text, they have Rita's binary string, and Rita's array buffer. They want me to do Rita's array buffer. Okay, how do array buffers work? To manipulate it, you need a view object. So I have to make like an int 16 array and, and pass in the data? Is that how that works? Oh, oh, that's it. We're done already. Cool. Those are actually totally sensible numbers. I mean, it doesn't start sensible. Yeah, we're looking for 9696 and then the one after that. So that 9696 probably says data. So 9696, I think says TA in capital letters. And then let's start our loop at data start plus one. Okay, so the idea here is I can just parse through this array and put it in my own array and then save that array to the sample data and then I should be able to play it. It's 16 bit signed, so it would be this number divided by two. So just divide by 32,768 and that should be the value that I want to give it. 
And I'm going to assume that the left and right channels are kind of interlaced with each other. So the idea is because this is in mono, I'm just going to average out the values together. And so if we go and add these two together and then divide by whatever two to the 16th is these days, yes, yeah, 65,536. This should be within negative one and one. And so then I could just insert that into my sample array. Just set the index equal to the value and that should be our array. And the index should be zero, correct? The index is 10.5. How did I screw this up? Okay, I see what I did wrong. I put the parentheses around the wrong thing. Good job. Great, that looks good enough to me. No, wait, okay, hold on. It's 18,809 samples, but this says this is 18,808 samples, so it's one longer than it should be. So that worries me. I said view.length plus one. I wanted view.length minus one. I was extending past the end of the array somehow, and it wasn't giving me an error because JavaScript hates giving errors. Okay, so now it should be the right size. And it is the right size, good. So now I read the whole thing in as an array buffer. I have it in an array in a format that my program can understand. And now all I have to do is uh, just save the stamp data, essentially. That's just in sample data instrument waveform. So all I have to do is just set those two things equal to each other. But then I have to just mess with a couple of other things. So this line right here should change it to make it say play. But I also want to hide the load data because we already loaded the data. And then to stop it from appearing again, I just say classList.remove. And if I hit play, does it play the sound? It did! It loaded it correctly! I'm, I'm shocked. And so now I can play it. Change the octave and everything. Okay, it's, it's having a little bit of glitching. Yeah, one thing that might be neat, because this is pretty quiet, is the ability to amplify the sample, because you're not always going to be able to control exactly the way that get, that gets read in. So yeah, basically just copy the amplitude row. I'll just call it Samp Amp. I don't want it to be a range, because I just want you to be able to enter in whatever you want here. I mean, basically, we're just going to multiply the Samp Amp by the waveform, just like we do with the wave amp. so it's just another multiplier on it. So now I just need to make a SAMP amp, just like there's a wave amp. Uh, add it to this other part of the load instrument data. Just everywhere where there's wave amp, add SAMP amp. Like, I don't even know what this part's doing. And yeah, pretty much just copy these things like before. Okay, good. So that should actually be done now. So if I load in the file, I can play it. But if I can, I can make it two times as loud. That didn't work. Why didn't that work? It says there's a two in there. Oh, oh, when I play it back, I don't listen to the amplitude. But it would work if it's on the piano, so... Yeah, it, you can actually hear it's quieter. So if I make this 10, it's going to be pretty loud. Okay, I want to just add it to the play function as well when you're playing back the sample. So like that, it should now, if I hit play, plays it, but I can amplify it, get real loud distorts it. And what's also great about that is that if I had just a normal sample or record my voice, goo goo ga ga. Goo goo ga ga. Right, I can mess with it and I could just, you know, do the same thing. Goo goo ga ga. Right, I can clip it. Let's see if I, what other samples I can grab from other places. Do I have any music on here? Do we have any, do we have any waves? I have relax. Uh, okay, what is this? Does this... I feel like that's at a different sample rate. Oh well, I don't care. So I could just take that sound. And that's cool, I've now sampled the 1990 game uh, Alpha Waves. So I could just like drop it in my piano roll and just make whatever noises I want with it. I want to point out one problem that becomes noticeably more apparent. So before this was less of a problem because you couldn't really even have really short samples when you're recording with your voice because you have to click to stop. But now that you can have really, really short samples, this is noticeable. So if I just wanted to take this tiny little clip here, right, this is maybe a tenth of a second. So I can go and import this. 
But notice the awkward crackling. Yeah, that's a bug. That's not good. That's probably because I'm like eating the outside of the array. I feel like I should fix that. So it looks like my intent is if we ever exceed the sample data's length, we should just set it to zero. So there should be nothing coming out of the speaker. Now, why is that not working? I kind of have to wonder why I'd be doing i is less than samp data dot length and not this whole string is less than samp data dot length. So I'm just gonna replace the i here with the samp index. And I'm just gonna declare that here. I wonder what that does. Oh, yeah, that fixed it. Yeah, anyway, I'm just gonna grab some cool samples now. Like here, maybe? I mean, I could use a drum. That's a good drum. All right, and then just get MC Ride. All right, now I got some cool samples that I can import here. I don't, I don't feel like composing anything. Let's just, let's see what it comes up with. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna save that one. <laughs> 